So I guess it's time for an NET Joss review! So we're looking at Drake's because we're not going to be looking at Simply Leaf anymore because they're basically shut down. And Darkstar. Yeah, Darkstar's taken over Simply Leaf. Um, for the people that haven't watched the recent WhatsApps, Simply Leaf and the Juice Cabin, Les Pickens Juice Cabin, the owners have decided to basically, well, one of the owners decided to leave the vaping industry and become a, become a mechanic. And the last owner left, they just don't have the time to run it anymore. So... Darkstar, oh boy, Darkstar's decided to step in and take over the NET line and of course the sim and of course the um, Juice Cabin line. They're going to be keeping the name Les Pickens Juice Cabin and Les Pickens Simply Leaf. I still have five or six bottles left of the uh, NET range from Simply Leaf that I'm not going to review because number one, there's no guarantee that Darkstar's going to keep those certain liquids running. They might cut half the line off and stop producing it. Number two, there's no guarantee Darkstar is going to stick with the less picking process of extraction, so the flavour could change. And number three, those are simply leaf slash less picking slash less picking staff extracted, bottled and manufactured NETs. Because of point one and two, whatever Dark Star come up with in the future, number one, may not have the same flavour, or number two, they might not actually be selling it anymore. So there's no point in me reviewing what's left of the Simply Leaf line. In other words, we're sticking with Dark Star, and there's actually a couple of new ones that have been sent in from the folks over at Exceptional Weights. We're going to be taking a look at one of those next week. But what we're looking at this week, we're looking at Turkish. Come on, focus in. Focus, thank you. We're looking at Drake's Turkish. Yeah. Albrich 2 from Vapefly. Mouth to lung tank sitting on top of the Vapefly Unibox. I've got a single uh, low density fuse clapton in here. The fuse clapton's coming out at 0.72. I've got this running at 21 watts. 0.8 millimeter airflow pin sitting in here. And we're off. I opened this bottle about, I opened this bottle up about a week ago, week and a half ago. There's literally only a tank full left at the base. Hey, I ploughed through this. I absolutely fucking ploughed through it. Turkish tobacco is a different genus of tobacco compared to Brightleaf, Virginia. Turkey is a much hotter country. They've also got a lot more sunshine compared to Virginia itself. And because of that heat and extra sun, the Turkish process is actually a two-step process. Normally what happens with a Turkish style tobacco leaf is for the first half of the curing process, they're hung up air curing in a barn, the slow process. Now because of the inherent heat in Turkey, that leaf is still cooking in 30 degrees Celsius air. Just air hanging up. But what happens halfway through that process when almost but not quite all of the leaf has turned that brown colour, the chlorophyll's dying off, when there's a little bit of that chlorophyll left, they take the leaves down and they lay them out on the ground. Sun curing. Only the back half, though, is sun cured. And what you end up with is a much darker leaf because ultraviolet, along with the rays of the sun and the sun cooking the leaf on the ground, has essentially killed the leaf. So you end up with a much more darker leaf compared to a bright leaf Virginia cured process, which is much more lighter leaf. And because of that darker leaf, you get much more stronger flavours coming out of that tobacco leaf. But more importantly, medium to medium high nicotine content because the extraction process has been dragged out a little bit longer. Not extraction, curing process has been dragged out a little bit longer. It's hard to describe a Turkish tobacco flavour if you haven't actually tried it yourself. But I'm going to try my fucking best here, right? You do not get the smooth, light, sweet tone that you would expect from a naturally extracted 
Virginia. But on the flip side of that coin, you don't get the heavy, heavy tones that you get from an extracted cigar flavour. Turkish tobacco is somewhere in between. It's not like a mix between the two. It's a flavour all by itself, but you can pick up subtle hints of a slight smoothness that you would kind of attribute to something like a bright leaf Virginia. But on the flip side of that coin, you can pick up subtle tones of a longer cure process sun-dried leaf that you would get on a Cuban cigar, but you don't get the Cuban cigar flavour. It's an odd thing to describe. It's a very odd thing to describe, but what you're basically looking at with this is a type of tobacco that you will not get in cigarettes. Because number one, they burn too quick, and number two, the flavour is too strong. You will not get this type of tobacco in a cigarette, so most smokers out there would have not tried a Turkish tobacco. They wouldn't have tried it. It's a very unique flavour all by itself. There's aspects, very subtle aspects, of a flu-cured Virginia. Very smooth, but that's only in the back note. But there's also aspects of that slightly heavier, slightly in-your-face tones that you get with a longer cure cigar process without the cigar flavour. It's going to sound confusing, I know. It's going to sound very confusing, but it's very hard to describe a Turkish tobacco flavour if you haven't smoked on one. If you haven't smoked on one. This might give you a kind of hint, though, as to why Turkish tobacco exists. You don't find it inside cigarettes, but have you seen travel documentaries of Turkey? Or for that matter, any country that basically surrounds Turkey going into the Asian subcontinent. You get the guys that are sitting sitting around an old school Turkish style tobacco hookah, which is the big bowl thing at the bottom filled with water with the tray at the top filled with pellets of tobacco, Turkish tobacco in this case. They blow on the, they, they blow or they suck on the pipe, the smoke's dragged down the tube into the bubbler to cool the smoke down and then the pipe brings it into their mouth. That lump of tobacco you see at the top that burns very quickly, Turkish. And this is the reason that Turkish tobacco is used inside hookahs. Number one, the water gets rid of all the impurities. Number two, the water cools it down. And number three, it's not a filtered cigarette, so it doesn't go and instantly burn into a frazzle. Hookahs, or hookah-style smokes, is usually where you find Turkish tobacco. And if you've ever smelled if you've, ever, if you've ever been to Turkey, and that odd smoky smell, Turkish tobacco, that's what it comes from. Very, very unique smell, very unique flavour, and you're getting it in this. Now again, you're not burning the liquid, you're vaporising the liquid. So some of the aspects that you'd be used to from the smell of a Turkish tobacco, you're not going to get from this. But what you're getting is the raw, pure flavour as is the case for a Virginia-based NET, as is the case for a Cuban cigar-based NET. You're getting the raw tobacco flavour. You're not getting the burnt set on fire flavour. There's a big difference, but what you're getting with this is a very unique flavour. It's definitely a very unique flavour. Mm. Another trick you can try, if you're going to get a bottle of this and you're kind of worried that you might not like the flavour, get one bottle of Turkish, and one bottle of standard Drake's Virginia, 50-50 mix. 50% Virginia, 50% Turkish. Give the bottle a shake, pop that in your tank, and I'll guarantee you, you're going to like it. You're not getting as strong a slight spice note from the Turkish because you're now mixing it with a baseline Virginia. Give it a try. I'll guarantee you, you're going to like it. I'll guarantee you. Or just get the straight bottle of Turkish if you like a stronger flavour. Just get the straight bottle of Turkish. I mean, that fucking bottle's gone. I can guarantee you, by the time the UK vape show comes up this Thursday, I'm going to have moved on to something else because that Turkish tobacco will be gone. It will be empty. Anyway. <sighs> I've always liked, I need to fill this tank up before I fucking forget, I've always liked Turkish tobacco. Always liked it because, again, when I was a smoker, when I was a smoker, I was very lucky to live literally a 15 minute train journey away from a very, very well-known tobacconist that used to be at Ayr, the town of Ayr, A-Y-R, the Ayr train central station. And 
his little tobacco in his shop was literally right next door to the train station and he used to bring in refined, processed Turkish tobacco. Very rare and it costed a fucking fortune. But oh, that flavour, that flavour was fucking phenomenal. And there's hints of it in here. That is a fucking good tobacco. That was Drake's Turkish. Big thanks to the folks at Drake's for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked, in what they do down below. But it's good, give it a thumbs up. Very fast at the top, you get the latest video, no matter what, no matter what video you're watching in the channel. I think that's latest What's Up Sunday Update vlog in the middle. Shout out to the hashtag Flu Family, the Patreon subscribe stars, and the YouTube members of Keeping Vaping Can Float Financially. That's what's keeping me in a job. And underneath me is the Vaping Without logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.